Hello, Milky friends. It is Milkstool here with you for another Idol Heroes video. How are you? Happy Friday. This is the week of campaign and wishing coins and the first week of them offering transcendence packages and us one <laughs> making us want to buy the cores of transcendence, which are obviously still very expensive. And I think over time, the price will come down. But this week, we're here to talk about the new events. So in particular, Idler's Sweet House, which is the campaign this week, as well as the special pack that you can buy for this week, which I'm going to argue really isn't that special. <laughs> Thank you for limiting us to one DH games. You are very generous because <laughs> you think is obviously such outstanding value. People would actually buy more than one pack. <laughs> I'm being facetious. So let's go over the event for this week and then we'll talk about next week's event. So week two of Ormus' workshop is this week and so there's nothing really to talk about. We now see the full lineup of pay-to-win artifacts uh, and what you can build. And I think it's good that from week to week they give you the full set of artifacts to be able to upgrade. Not that it's easy to be able to upgrade it, but they obviously do limit how much you can upgrade every week to about 30,000 artifact essence. Uh, it won't actually, so I've, I've actually tried to recycle more artifact essence or get more artifact essence. And I've come to realize that <laughs> they limit you to 30,000. See how it says you have obtained enough artifact essence. So basically every single week, they only let you, well, every fortnight, every two weeks, they only allow you to upgrade an artifact all the way from nothing to splendid and that's it. So that's their way of restricting how quickly people can upgrade artifacts. And so I didn't know that uh, until I got to the limit this week. Because if you try and, for example, if you try and recycle more artifacts than what it allows, any extra dust, artifact dust, or bits that you recycle above the 30,000 artifact essence cap end up being dust. I didn't know that. I just saw that. You don't lose anything, but that's just so you know. But that all, that's all Mrs. Workshop. Glorious boost. It's the second week of the events. I've already exchanged out for the Wildfire Torch. I really want to get another Rui, but I don't have enough artifacts. I've already bought a whole stack of artifacts with feathers, and I will continue to buy when I get enough feathers. Artifacts for feathers. I think that's the best use of feathers right now, especially with Transcendence. Uh, and the cores, not transcendence, especially void and the cores that you can get. I'm seeing people get like so many good copies. It's just really redundant uh, using feathers for heroes. I would argue, especially if you're a big spender. So glorious boost. I think they're going to offer this in tandem with all Mrs. Workshop every two weeks, which is nice to know. So every week they're going to cycle through the five different types of artifacts you can get, which is decent. Uh, and I look forward to what the next five are. Value packs this week, there's nothing special to talk about. This is the standard set of stuff you can get. Transcendence package, expansion package, is the special package for this week, and I'll do the value analysis. But effectively, it's not It's not necessarily a must-buy. I mean, the only difference between this Transcendence pack and the expansion, the Transcendence packs you can buy here, because it's effectively the same, is that one chest... It's the one chest the, that allows you to pick any light dark hero. And that's the only incremental value that they give here. But overall, yeah, I'm still not sold on it. <laughs> so the limit of one, it's nice that you limit people to buying one of these packs. I don't know what makes you, I don't know why you would buy more than one right now, unless you were filthy rich. I mean, if you were filthy rich, one, it's, it's, it's that, that. If you were filthy rich and you bought all the packs here already, this really is that this little chest, it's not going to make or break the big, big whales that are going to spend and buy the chest. So, this limit of one is arbitrary. So is the limit of 10 here. That's arbitrary. I mean, how many sword flash seers is someone really going to build? How much, if, or why would you limit to 10? What, like, if you're trying to make money from it, if you're going to charge someone a hundred bucks for this pack. Why would you limit it to 10? Firstly, it's like terrible value. So the people that can afford it, right? You should just let them buy as many as they want and build as many sword flash seers as they want. So I, I just don't get DH games. Are you trying to make money 
or you trying not to make money, right? If, you, if you're going to go hard, go hard, son. Don't, don't hold back, right? If you want people to spend, don't put these limits here. Just let them spend as much as they want. Because right now, no one is buying Sword Flash Seer on Android, uh, as you can tell from Boy Temple. Uh, and so, not Boy Temple, Obelisk of Heroes. So this is basically where you can tell who has spent the $1,700, $2,000 to get Sword Flash Seer. And so we're up to, what, like 24, more people have bought it. So 27 people have bought it now. A lot less than iOS. I don't know what the stats are on TapTap, -tap, but on iOS, I think they're up to 50 or 70 people that have bought, <laughs> excuse me, I've just these, that have bought Sword Flash Seer, uh, the Transcendence Cores and all the different packs. And so hard to tell if this is going to keep going up, but it's not like it's flying out the door. So that is the Transcendence Pack for this week. Uh, very quickly in terms of value, Transcendence Pack, where are we? Transcendence Pack, e easy-ish to value. So you get 5,000 gems, 15 cores, which are worth 1,500 gems per core because that's how much it costs at the marketplace every day. And one light dark hero box, which we say a light dark hero is generally worth 3,875 gems. I know a lot of you disagree with that value. I'm not going to get into a shit fight about <laughs> what the true value of a light dark hero is because two weeks ago or three weeks ago, no, a month ago when I last did this campaign event, we got into a huge shit fight about how much an artifact was really worth and it's not worth 4,000 uh, artifacts. Well, it's not worth about 4,000 gems, which is what when you look at the calcs, was saying it's worth based on a conversion factor using the the scrolls to to convert all these cupcakes to equivalent gem values. Uh, if you don't believe this artifact is worth like four, four and a half, five thousand gems, then there's no way this hero is worth three thousand eight hundred gems. He's worth way more. Leaving that aside, let's just accept that the that there's issues with the conversion. But generally speaking, directionally speaking, it's more or less correct. So if you buy that, then this week. The Transcendence, the Tranny Expansion Pack is worth 314 gems per dollar. And generally speaking, we're looking for good value. We're looking for something between 350 and $400 or above $400. 400 gems per dollar is the, the minimum threshold I'm setting now for these special packs that they offer from week to week. So last week, it was the Rogue and the Legion Pack. And there, last week, we got uh, a gem value of 466 gems per dollar spent. This week, it's about $314, so it's 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 not outstanding value. The other thing I should mention, if you use my spreadsheet a lot, is I've added the Transcendence Packs. So these packs here, I've added them into my spreadsheet. And so, not all packs are created equal. If you were, like, if you wanted to buy these cores and you were deeply value conscious, then the data is basically saying you should only buy pack number three, which is, what's this one? The $50 pack. So this pack here is worth more than the other packs. The worst value pack is basically this $30 one where it's what, $250. You get 250 gems per dollar spent. The next best value ones are the $10 and the $100 one where you get 275 gems per dollar spent. And then like I said, the best value one is the fifty dollar pack. It's two hundred ninety gems per dollar spent. So, if you're gonna, if you got cash, and you're gonna whale out because you won the lottery, then buy the fifty dollar pack. Because even though you're rich, right, you want to spend your money wisely. You want to get value. So buy the fifty dollar one if you're gonna whale out. And just it looks like it resets. Ends in one hundred nineteen days. It looks like it just resets. I don't. So if it resets, then. Just wait until it comes back and just keep buying the $50 packages, right? That or just buy this one because this one you get the, the, the light dark hero chest. Not that you need it because you, the reality is if, you, if you're going to buy this pack for these cores, you're not buying it for the light dark hero copies. You're probably buying it because you want a sword flash here and you already have a fuck ton of Russells and Drakes and Kerry's. Like money is no object to you. So those are the things... You can buy this week. Let's talk about the campaign for this week. So the campaign for this week is a bit disappointing uh, for a couple of reasons. One, you'll note that the the 3,100 cupcake level and the 2,700 cupcake level. Last week, or last time they did this event, this used to be a chest where you could pick any light dark hero. 
and here you could pick any long light dark elite heroes this week they've just gone back to very specific heroes which i think is just terrible not that anyone even bothers to buy uh copies at the 3100 or 2700 level it's just terrible value like you should just save all your universal crystal shards just to get the artifacts that's just that's just what everyone does um but yeah it's i, I think they've gone the other way in terms of making these like specific heroes rather than those chests the artifact to get for this week if you want to spend your universal crystal shards because you have so many is the staff punisher of the immortal it's primarily for pve right now but who's to say that won't change in the future just for me just stock up on fucking everything that you can get that's free or that's easy to get it's not necessarily a priority pay to win artifact punisher of the immortal so i wouldn't go out of my way to to get it especially if you're just waiting for better artifacts but yeah and then other things this week, Narkia is the hero that we can all probably get because every week, in terms of the campaign currency and how much of the campaign currency drops, everyone gets between 2,300 and 2,400 of the campaign currency for the week. And so you can absolutely get Narkia if you want this week. Uh, you can get the Pajama Party. Who's this? E Starlight Skin, which... <laughs> why would you bother? Otherwise, my tip is if you spent profit orbs in the last few weeks to get the rogan copies or uh to get who's before rogan sherlock and you're saving up for black friday i would say this week above and beyond use your campaign currency to get profit orbs uh, and you should be able to get seven or eight of these puppies right usually i get scrolls because i'm trying to save up scrolls i don't really need more food but seeing recently how good the heroes they offer up for profit orbs and completing one profit orb loop are I, I might switch back to just acquiring profit orbs and especially because i'm short for black friday i'm definitely going to do that because i already have 2000 scrolls uh and i think that's enough for either the christmas light dark hero or the new Year chinese new year's light dark hero we'll see which one's better but yeah i am not going to get any more scrolls the other thing that sort of ruins scrolls and i haven't done the analysis right now the other thing that ruins scrolls is the compass of the transcendence, right? How quickly after a new hero gets released, are they going to offer up this hero? Because if they're just going to offer it up after one or two weeks, it's questionable whether scrolls are worth it compared to these uh, cores of transcendence anymore. And I think that's the, that's the analysis at hand. If you had a set amount of gems, is it better to buy profit orbs? scrolls or these cores right now based on my very hazy thinking based on what i've seen it looks like even though cores cost 1500 a piece the reality is when you do the math on profit orbs and scrolls and what you get for the equivalent amount of say if you spend 1500 get three profit orbs or 10 11 scrolls the core gives you a lot more than just the three profit orbs and 10 11 scrolls believe it or not i need to break it down and, and do the very simple analysis and i'll do that for my private discord and i'll post the video up there first but even though this is as a unit is very expensive it's better value right so it's one of those things if you know some just because something's expensive it doesn't mean you shouldn't buy it right so like tesla tesla stock went like through the roof that's why they had to split it it was like going out to like thousands of dollars i think from memory because they split it five to one even though tesla was super expensive at that point in time before they split the stock i think it was like let's i, I forget the exact price but it was basically like two thousand dollars tesla stock at one point in time and they had to split it meaning they had to cut up into pieces so if you had one tesla stock they cut up into a divided by five and they say right every person that holds one stock before the split now holds four stocks and each stock is worth the equivalent number of split up amount and that was so people could buy more but people knew that even though it was expensive it was inherently worth more and that's what i'm trying to say about core as well yes it's 1500 gems but if you know something is worth 1500 gems would you or more should you buy it especially when something else is for example the scrolls or the profit orbs are less value compared to the cores should you buy more cores the answer is yes Anyway, that, that, that analysis isn't going to be easy because I know there's a lot of second and third order benefits in terms of when you use 
the profit orbs, obviously you get extra rewards along the way, like Rogan copies, Light Dark Hero copies. But when you use the cores, you don't get second and third order benefit. You literally get five star food. And then depending on the drop rate, you get a Rogan or a Russell copy or whoever, whichever hero you've specified on the left or on the right. So the first order analysis is going to be easy, but the second order analysis is going to be harder. Like I said, I'll post my very rough and dirty analysis on my private Discord. And then I will do the second order analysis after I get feedback on my first order analysis and whether or not people sort of tend to gel with it. Because I know valuing stuff is hard and there's a lot of contention. Anyway, I have digressed. So Isla Sweet House, I think just get profit orbs, just get ready for Black Friday. Uh, and we know that Tix is going to drop for profit orbs around the time of Black Friday. Because if you, how many of if you follow the progression of the heroes that they offer for the Profit Orb events, right? It's basically lags behind scrolls by a couple of months. So we just had Sherlock. Oh no, sorry. We just had Rogan. Before that, we had Sherlock. Next up is Ignis. And then after that is Tix. If we are lucky, Black Friday will be... The campaign currency for Black Friday will be Profit Orbs. And Tix will be the hero that we get when we complete certain number of loops. So if that's the case, I would be saving like crazy to get 320 profit orbs in time for Black Friday. We can skip Ignis because Ignis is probably going to be the next hero that you can get from doing one loop of profit orbs, which is good. Um, I think Black Friday, the next one after Ignis, will be ticks and hopefully that coincides with the, the event. I think it does. I think I'm pretty sure it does because we're at mid-September now. So another four months, you're going to be like October-ish. Uh, and that's going to be your next uh, profit orb event. And then after that is ticks. Of course, I could be wrong. I could be, they could be very sneaky and <laughs> ticks could be the profit orb event just before Black Friday. And they're going to try and make you spend all your profit orbs before the Black Friday event because everyone's seen how great ticks is for Aspen Dungeon. Uh, and to complete Shadow Seal Land 20. So everyone's trying to get copies of Ticks now. That could be their plan. And I suspect, that I'm 50-60% sure that might be the case. But I'm also hoping, secretly hoping, that Ticks is the hero that you get for completing one loop on Black Friday. Because then that puts two things that everyone's after into one event. And I think that'll just be fantastic if that's the case. One hold my breath. So that's Idler's Sweet House and the things for this week. Like, fairly average artifacts and no one bothers with those heroes. Wishing Fountain event, the hero this week is Kamath. We, neither hero there. It's just, it's food. So, again, you're only doing Wishing Coin with a Wishing Fountain event just literally for orbs because, like I said, get to 320. We want to save for Black Friday, right? So I'm not, I'm not going to talk about the Wishing Fountain event. In terms of Mysterious Chest, uh, I think no, there's nothing special about this week. Everyone always buys the scroll one because it's just phenomenal value because each scroll is 125 gems a piece if you were bought to buy it uh, at Aspen Dungeon or in the marketplace. Each scroll that you buy is worth 125 gems. So here they're offering it for 500. That's already a discount. On top of that, you get 5,000 purple promotion stone. It's the same deal with Profit Orbs. Profit Orbs, the min cost on uh, gems per profit or basis 450. So four times 450 is about a math 1600, 1800 gems. They're selling 1500 gems. On top of that, you get 10,000 monster souls. Great. This dust one is also good value. If you're after pink dust and you're willing to spend gems on it, you should buy it. Otherwise, just kind of ignore and get pink dust over time from wherever you get it. Uh, I mean, I, most of my pink dust comes from Celestial Island. Uh, when I do the sacrifice, <laughs> sacrificing of these stones for in in the pot, in the cauldron to get this, and that's how I basically get most of my pink dust. On top of the the mines, obviously. Uh, and if you're desperate for pink dust and you really really need pink dust, uh, that that chest is decent value. Like on a gems per pink dust basis. It's much better than what you can get at the marketplace, which is here. I've done the math before. I'm not going to do it again. Uh, 
it's much better value than that. And on top of that, you get the bonus of a crystal shard, not crystal shard, a light, elite light dark shard, which it's hard to get anything elite, so it's just effectively more food. This middle one is also kind of a normal one because no one really gives a toss about skin. So here you get five just normal skins, which can fuse into a limited skin. So you can fuse five of these and potentially get one of these, like her, basically. So it's worth that skin pack. Uh, is only worth about, I don't know, 1,800 gems thereabouts, assuming you value skins at all. And then you also get the Chaos Stones. The last pack is for 6,000 gems. You get the Orange Artifact Exclusive Fragment as well as uh, the Guild Coins, which are still useful for those of you who are upgrading Guild Tech. I bought this pack purely because of the Orange Artifact Exclusive Fragment because in... I need, I need fodder. I need artifact fodder to be able to upgrade all my pay-to-win artifacts. And the best way to get that, the fastest way to get that is via these orange exclusive artifacts because each orange exclusive artifact gets you, if we go to the table, and this is available in the spreadsheet that you can download, each orange exclusive artifact gets you 3,600 artifact essence. So each one you sacrifice, 3,600 essence. And that's the best value. Like, oh, well, it's not the best value. It's the most you can get out of any other artifact because a normal orange artifact only gets you 900 essence. A purple artifact from the, the wishing coin wheel only gets you 15 essence. Any red artifacts, 240 essence, whether it's exclusive or not. So best, the largest amount of essence, orange exclusive artifact. And on you can only, the only other place you can get orange exclusive artifact, you can buy it for gems, is from the merchant on Celestial Island. And that costs you 5,000 gems. Here... They are asking for 6,000 gems. And for an extra 1,000 gems, they're going to throw in 30,000 guild coins, which I think is a pretty darn good deal. All right, so that's why I bought it. Not really for the guild coins, because I already get enough of those over time, and I'm not really... I've already upgraded a lot of things. I'm not that desperate. It's more the case for... And, and this might... This last chest probably really is, I would argue, only for people who are endgame or sort of paid to win-ish, right? If you're free to play... It's probably not that great value because that orange exclusive artifact is nothing for you. But if you need to upgrade pay to win artifacts and you need artifact essence, this is the quickest way to do it. Getting these orange exclusive artifact fragments. And this is one of uh, the mysterious chest is one of the two places where you can actually buy it. Like besides the merchant on Celestial Island, you cannot get it anywhere else. That's why I bought it. So those are the events for this week. Let's look ahead to next week's event. And I was quite excited when I saw the shelter mission because it's an assassin fest. You can get more Seer copies. You can get Ithaqua, which I think, I think given, if you watch my Void video, Void Day 3 Thoughts video, you'll note that I said the next generation of PVE is about one-shotting level 100 void corruption heroes or teams for just uh, you know the minimum five lumina energy so i think in terms of where the pve focus is headed i think it's headed there and i think it'll be important to build teams that can handle such uh such power from from that you face and so i don't know right now whether or not a pve team that does well on uh, flame shine on broken spaces whether that's the one to go or it's some other pve team which is why i think if Thakwa, i'm going to build one just to hedge where the game might be headed right i think if you know void if void is new pve and you need like just to do a ton of damage then that's saying it's it's it's, it's a delasium army that you absolutely need to build which consists unfortunately of an ethical Ithaqua, two Delassiums, a Rogan, uh, a Heart Watcher. So I think that's why next week it's such a great, potentially a great expansion pack, well, shelter mission for Void. So I'm very excited that they're offering Sia. I'm very excited that they're offering Ithaqua. A Heart Watcher who will now bring to E5 simply because I think she needs to live. Because Not that I've seen what the Void 100 heroes do in terms of damage but i think we're going to need a level 350 
Heart Watcher to have any chance of surviving and doing well Void, cor- at void Corruption 100, right? Naki is eh, here or there, but it's 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 basically Assassin Week next week, and I, I like that they've lined it up. So I'm pro- I'm I'm definitely excited for next week's uh, Shelter Mission event. Imps Adventure is still Imps Adventure. Uh, the Mid Autumn Celebration is going to be the the Good Value Pack. It's going to run for over two weeks. Um, I think VIP reward. I think this is is going to be a good deal. Uh, let's just see what's Anything that's over two weeks is generally a really good deal, and they did over two weeks. They're doing it over two weeks to try and get, obviously, people to buy that pack as much as possible. Excited for that. Let's just wait for it to drop. Then you get the standard Monopoly value packs. Anyway, that's the video for me for today. I hope you found that useful. Leave a comment down below (laughs) in terms of what you think about next week and where the game is headed in general. Anyway, have a great weekend ahead. I will see you next time.